Hi guys. Happy Thursday. It's No Makeup Thursday. I love No Makeup Thursday. As long as the hair's done, nails done, it's all good. Um, I have a really fun little project for you today. A little more involved than perhaps the last couple have been, but um, I think you're going to like it anyway. I know I do. Uh, before we get to that though, we have to uh, talk about our winner from Saturday's Live, and that was Linda Martin. So Linda, if you happen to check out the YouTube channel, please get in touch with us. We have sent you a message on Messenger, so uh, just let us know where we can ship your, your goodies. You've won a wonderful set of stencils. Um, I have a giveaway for today too. This is going to be a nice set of Dynasty Black Gold Angled Shaders. The three sizes that I use the most, are, so somebody's going to win a set of those next week. And uh, we also have a second giveaway, which is the pattern and the stencil that we're going to use for the project today. So one of you will win that. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment, let us know where you're watching from. We'd really love to know how far or near you are to us. So uh, I think I'm just about ready to get started. <laughs> if he puts the camera down. <laughs> okay, so this is the project that I wanted to show you. It's a, like I said, a little bit more involved than what we usually do on the on the midweek, but I thought you'd have fun with it. And I'm really kind of obsessed with this tag surface. So uh, a lot of the stuff I've been playing with lately seems to end up on one of these. And I'm really obsessed with the black background. Don't ask me why, I have no idea, but we're going to work on that as well. So to get started, it's really simple. So we have to develop that background a little bit. And I've started with just a simple lamp black. And the stencil I'm using is called Elegant Swirls. And I've turned it so that I kind of fit a whole bunch of the swirls in the center. So they'll be in behind our uh, little gingerbread. And I'm going to tape this in place. Now, I debated on what kind of stencil to use in the background of this. Because there was a lot of negative space in this, uh, I really wasn't quite sure what I wanted as far as background pattern. I thought about doing buffalo check, but that was too busy. And I thought about polka dots, but that was too busy. So then it occurred to me that it might be a good idea to just go with something really simple and just a simple swirl with a little bit of traditional gold in the background. Mmm, good coffee. So we're going to load up that stencil brush with 24 karat gold. This is the Extreme Sheen from Decoart. It's my favorite gold. And I'm just doing this very lightly, circular fashion, changing directions frequently. I'm not pressing hard on this stencil brush. There's no need to. I don't want a really solid or fully opaque gold finish. I just want a little bit of sparkle in that background. Just something to break up all that negative space. So a little bit. Not a ton of paint on the brush either. I'm, it's almost dry. So there we go. Now I like that, especially on the black, because it's really going to show. Shows up quite nicely. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And I just get rid of the extra paint in that brush. There we go. So that is as elaborate as that background gets. Now, if you find that it's a little too bold or a little too brassy looking, you can take a wash of the black, thin it right out and just run a, a layer of that over top of it. It will knock that gold back just a little bit. So I'm going to check to see if that is, it's not quite dry. So I'm going to dry it a little. There we go. Just so it's not tacky. Now I'm going to take my, I've got a big flat wash here. I'm going to thin out some of that lamp black with some water. And I'm just going to brush over that gold a little bit. It just takes some of that brassiness out of it. You don't need a ton of it. It doesn't need to be fully opaque, but just takes a little of that brassiness out of the metallic. Perfect. 
And from there, we transfer the pattern, and then you're going to base coat. So the base coats on this one are really simple. The tag that's on here is base coated with warm white. The cookie itself is base coated with honey brown. And then the dark edge of the cookie is base coated with asphaltum. All of the buttons and the eyes are all done with lamp black. The holly leaves are base coated with antique green. And then the two berries I've base coated with the warm white as well. And I will come back to that little bit of greenery back here. But we're going to start with these berries. So I'm going to take a, a liner or small round or something, and you're going to base coat those berries over top of that white with one coat of country red. Now, why did she base coat them white if she was going to paint over them with red? Well, the reason behind that is that this red does not cover very well over black. And I wanted that red to be quite vibrant, so I base coated with white first, and then I apply the red. You want those berries to pop off of that background. If they're over top of the red, they're not going to be very bright, and I wanted them bright. And I'm only using one coat. There's no need to put multiple coats on this. I do want to cover all of the white. There we go. So from there, we're going to start the shading on these leaves. Now, I was talking about using those three angled shaders. These are them. These are the black gold. It's a one quarter, a three eighths, and a one half. Now, the reason I have decided to use the black gold as opposed to the faux squirrel is because of the body of this brush. It has a very sharp chisel edge, and you want that for these little tight corners, and you want it for the control. I usually work on textured surfaces, so the faux squirrel is ideal for that because it holds a ton of paint, and it has lots of body. These are a little less bulky at the ferrule, and they have this really nice sharp chisel edge that makes them ideal for this type of detail work. So the first brush I'm going to dip into is this. Uh, this is the 3 8 and I just realized that I was missing a color on my palette, which is the Plantation Pine or Sap Green. So I'm going to tip load that angle with the plantation pine or sap green if you're using the fluid acrylic and this is the shading color i am using for these holly leaves and i lay that brush right on the chisel edge so you're using the whole chisel edge of that brush just like that and i have too much water in my brush i forgot to get my sponge today a lot more control when you've got the right amount of water in the brush. So I'm going to shade down the center line of that leaf. And I'm going to shade underneath that tag, like so, and under that hand. Right down the center line of that leaf. So at this stage, not the prettiest looking floats, and that's okay. But any time that you're floating, you should have the whole chisel edge of that brush on the surface. So there's that second float deepens that shading. And I'm going to do the same thing in here, just to deepen that shadow underneath that tag and under that arm. Still not looking real pretty, but that's okay. It will look fine by the time we're finished.
Now to shade those berries, those ones that we, I'm dipping into that lamp black, just a small amount. And I'm going to blend it very well. I don't want this color full strength. So I'm walking it back so that I get a nice gradient. And then I'm going to shade that berry underneath that holly leaf and right here. Now see the whole chisel edge of that brush is on the surface. Darkest value towards that. And there's our berry. So rinse that brush out. I'm going to switch over to the half inch. This one here. Because we're working in a larger area now, I want to use a larger brush. So this is Asphaltum. And again, I want good control over this, so I'm going to walk that color out, like so. So now our little gingerbread is going to get a float of Asphaltum. And you'll notice that I'm putting the shadow on the shaded side. So wherever that line of Asphaltum is, is going to get a float of a shaltum, just like so. And same here. Now underneath this tag, we want to put a shadow, but we don't want to have it perfectly in line with this tag. So I'm going to start my shadow about a quarter of an inch from the end of the tag. And then I'm going to slide it along like this. And by doing that, it elevates this tag and lifts it above the cookie. Now there is a thread or a string that attaches here. So I'm going to run a thin note. I'm just using the tip of that angled brush. And I'm running a thin float of color to the point, to the tip of that tag. And you'll see what it does in just a minute. So I'm going to switch over to my latest obsession, and that is this 10 aught extra long detail liner. I love this brush. This liner is just amazing. This is a Dynasty Micron, I love them. I've always known they were good brushes and it wasn't until recently they started playing with it again and I love this liner. So the line for that thread runs from just above the shoulder, right along the edge of that shadow that we just did, right to the tip of that tag. And now we have shadow underneath that thread. So now we're going to start giving this little gingerbread some character. And that's when I switched back to this quarter inch angle. We're going to tip into that warm white, just a very small amount of color. And I'm going to blend this out. Again, I don't want the color full strength, so I'm going to walk it out. And I'm going to come up to the eyes and put a float of the warm white. Of course, it would help if there was more paint in it. I walked it out a bit too much. I'm gonna put a float of that warm white. Oh my goodness, too much water, not enough paint. There we go. So just inside the edge of that eye, I'm going to put a sea stroke float. Not completely to the edge. I just want, I want to leave a small space. And I'm going to do the same thing to the buttons. You don't want it full strength, but you have to be able to see it. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick up my liner. And to me, this is where these little guys take shape and bring, come to life is when you add that little dot highlight to the buttons and to the eyes. 
Once they have eyes, they're more lifelike. back to my warm white. A little stronger this time. And I'm going to put a highlight on the part of the heart. And that little heart is just base coated with a little bit of country red. And we're going to do the same thing to these berries. Just a little float with some paint. Again, just inside the edge of that circle, leaving some of that red showing like so. And again, that little dot of white. And that little heart has to have a shadow. So I'm going to with that quarter inch angle, pick up a little bit of lamp black. And again, not full strength. And on the back side of that little heart, I'm going to put a float. Not full strength, just enough to give that heart a little shape. Looks good already. So that tag also has to get a little age on it. I'm going to pick up a littleish Faltum. And in this case, I'm using that 3 8 And I want to darken the bottom of this tag just a little. I don't want it to be too dark. I just don't want it to be that stark white either. There we go. And you can do the same thing to the top corner, just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. This tag is supposed to look a little distressed. And so there we go, a little bit of that color there. And now we're going to highlight those leaves. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of matcha green. That's that lighter value. And again, I'm keeping the color fairly weak. I'm not very rarely do I use it full strength. And I'm going to come up on these points. Of course, we need more paint than that. There we go. A little heavy handed with the water today. Too much water. So I'm just pulling a little of that matcha green onto the highlight side and the points of those leaves, like so. And up the center on the opposite side of that shadow. And I like to come back onto the other points as well. It helps define the shape of the leaf. And it cleans up any little rough areas while you're at it. I generally will go over this a couple of times until I get the brightness that I want. So don't feel you have to get it exactly perfect the first time because you don't. And don't worry if some of that color covers up your shade, your shadow on the center line because you're going to deepen that again. I'm going to rinse this brush because I getting what I want. There we go. There we are. There's that bright highlight I was looking for. It's 
So it's just a matter of layering color. I think you get better intensity and better control if you worry about getting it on in layers as opposed to getting it just so the first time. And it's important that you have that whole belly of that brush or the whole chisel edge of that brush on the surface. It will help give you nice, clean, smooth floats. So now I have those highlights in, I'm going to come back in with that plantation pine this time. And I'm going to deepen that shadow. And look at how nice and smooth that comes out. It softens and cleans up a whole bunch of things all at the same time. Smooths out those transitions really nicely. Excellent. So I'm going to, just realized I missed one. I missed a spot here. There we go. It wasn't quite dark enough here. So now we have to add a few little details here and there. And this is a great time to come back with that 10 aught liner. This time I'm going into the warm white. And I like this part because this is where you get to add a few fun details to your gingerbread. And I add that little swirl of icing onto the arms. And I don't worry if it goes over the arm a little bit, because I think that's kind of fun. And because this is a little girl, we're going to put a nice little line of that icing along the bottom of her dress. And I'm going to do it on her feet as well. Of course our little girl has to have her hair done, so we're going to use three little comma strokes here, here, dress up our girl, and I'm going to pick up that matcha green and a little bit of that warm white, about 50-50. So one to one, I'm going to make a lighter value of that green. And we're going to add just some fine little sketchy lines to the edges of our holly, like so. It doesn't matter if they are on the leaf or off. It doesn't matter if they're perfect in fact, I think they're much more interesting if they're not. This just sort of softens the edges of these leaves a little, lets them look a little less harsh. You can take a fine line up the center as well. I like adding little curly cues to these leaves. Keep it simple and keep it loose. It gives a nice little highlight to those leaves. Now, remember I talked about this greenery back here. We're going to make three values of the same color for this, with this liner. And this is the eucalyptus leaf, is the base color, and it's just simple little comma strokes to create each leaf. So we have the full strength color, and we're going to take a little warm white, and we're going to make a slightly lighter value of that color, and we're going to overstroke in a few places with that lighter value. 
And again, we're just using simple little comma strokes like this. So you're going to fill in gaps in this little bit of greenery just by using a few simple loose little comma strokes using that mid value. Then you're going to take a little more white and make a lighter value still. And again, you're going to overstroke in a few places, just using that lighter value. Keep it simple and don't overthink it, just drop them into place. And then finally, another daub of the warm white to make an even lighter value. It should be almost white. Quite a bright value of that. And we're going to add just a few little light strokes here and there. Nothing over the top. And then that color, I like to do this, is just take a few little dots very tiny dots here and there around that greenery. This just sort of softens the outline of it. So we only have one more step to do and that one is so fun. Actually it's two steps because I almost forgot one. So I'm going to take my fugly brush, if I can find it, Ooh, I have a new one, and I'm going to pick up that warm white with a little bit of water, and I'm going to spatter the surface. This is just thinned warm white, kind of gives everything a candy-like feel, and I'm going to let that dry. And then I like to take my Uniball Signal, my black gel pen, and put little stitch marks around this tag, like so. Now, you could put whatever you wanted on this card, but seeing as it's cookies, I'm going to do two, and then Santa. Now, if you really want to lift up those buttons, because I did that previously, and I just realized that I forgot to do it this time around. You put a float of asphaltum on the back side of each of those buttons. It's just a weak float, like so. And it lifts those buttons up a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing to the eyes. Just gives them a little bit more elevation. And there you have it. We have a fun little gingerbread cookie just for Santa. That's it, guys. Simple one, lots of fun. Uh, this one is actually part of or inspired by another project for an upcoming event. Uh, so keep your eyes out for that. We also have another event in the planning stages and uh, we'll fill you in on a few details in the next upcoming videos. And uh, hopefully you'll be happy to participate. I know I'm really excited about it. So, all right guys, you have a great weekend, everybody. Mwah. Love you. Stay safe.